We're here to make a new type of news. New insights, new styles, and new topics every day. We are News Generation. Making news just for you. It's December 28th here in Seoul. I'm Shinyun, and you're watching News Generation. Joining me in the studio is Nell Song. Good morning. Good morning. And Jem Kozak. Good morning. Good morning. Now, both are here to speak on behalf of people in their 20s and 30s. As usual, let's start with our news feed, which covers different hashtags and news items that have been trending on social media over the past 24 hours. As part of efforts to go plastic free, Jeju Samdasu, one of Korea's most popular bottled water brands, has been stripping plastic labels off its bottles. Thanks to such efforts, 40% of its sales this year were from water bottles without plastic labels, and the company sold 400,000 tons of label-free bottles. Most were sold online. Compared to last year, households looking for label-free bottles online increased by roughly 30%. The Korea Cultural Heritage Administration said the walls of Seoul's Gyeongbokgung Palace will once again be cleaned by January 4th. Last week, a group of vandals spray-painted the palace's walls. Officials immediately tried erasing graffiti, but due to the cold snap, they had to wait until Tuesday morning morning to resume operations. The administration also plans on increasing the number of CCTV cameras near the palace and strengthening its regulations on those who damage cultural heritage. And South Korean actor Lee sung yoon known to the world mainly for his role in the Academy Award-winning film Parasite, has died. Police confirmed on Wednesday that the 48-year-old was found dead in his car and presumed to have committed suicide. Lee's death comes amid ongoing investigations for illegal drug use. He had been questioned three times since October as part of investigations. Investigations. Throughout the investigation, these drug tests had all come back negative, and the actor claimed that he had been tricked and blackmailed into using drugs. Subsequently, he filed a complaint as well as submitting a polygraph test request, and following news of his death, police shared their condolences to the actor's bereaved family. They said they really tried to prevent media leaks about his drug investigation, and this comes as South Korean law prohibits the police from disclosing facts about the suspect before an official indictment is released. Nonetheless, Lee's case was high profile given that he was a veteran actor. Back in 2021, he won a Screen Actors Guild Award along his Parasite castmates. And last year, he was also nominated for Best Actor at the International Emmy Awards for the film Dr. Brain. So here in the studio, I was actually quite surprised to see this news. I think it came as shock to me. I've seen Lee sung hit the headlines over the past few months in regards to his illegal drug uh, investigation. But to see his death story came as a major shock. What about you, Jem? Yeah, absolutely. Very, very tragic. And actually, I let out an audible gasp when I first saw it. And I saw the news via social media. It was passing around very fast. And uh, I saw that many people were posting photos, personal photos, kind of showing how warm and friendly he was. So I think it's a really big loss to the community. And uh, he will be missed and remembered by many, absolutely. Right. What were your thoughts on this now? Yeah, I mean, just like Jem, I also had an audible gasp moment. This mm -hmm. was just devastating news. and. When I heard the story, I was so shocked. I realized that he was going through a lot with this investigation and everything. But, you know, I didn't realize it was going to come to such a quick halt mm -hmm. and just death at the end. Um, I enjoyed his films and dramas, and I'm really sudden, uh, saddened by his sudden death. And I'm sure this is affecting his family and friends in just ways we cannot even imagine. And so condolences to his family and friends, and may he rest in peace. May he rest in peace. And I would like to just emphasize, I agree with the police. I think uh, there were too many leaks about this high-profile case. And we mentioned before coming on air that once a celebrity's image is tarnished like that, it's really hard for them to bounce back up, which is why we don't know the exact causes yet. Mm. We can never talk to him again about this. But it is definitely saddening to see some lose their life. And that was our news feed for this Thursday. And we're going to switch gears and a bit of the atmosphere in order for us to go into our main discussion topic of the day. Today, we're going to look back at some articles released by overseas media outlets in regards to South Korea and its unique cultural or social trends. Now, before we analyze different stories one by one, we're going to first take a listen to what our viewers thought were, were some really hot trending K-culture news stories covered in other parts of the world. Here's what three of them had to share with us. Take a look at the screen to find out.
Let's start with Toby. Toby said, Chuseok and Seollal, a lot of work, especially by the ladies of the household, goes into making. These traditional holidays are the wonderful experiences they are. And Tasmia said, Bangladesh and South Korea celebrated their 50th year of diplomatic ties by having a week-long event of selling products from South Korea and had performances from K-pop groups and Taekwondo athletes. Leon said, BTS members flourishing their solo careers and all members entering military service. These are all different aspects that our viewers mentioned, but one other element that I would really like to focus on is K-dramas. Mm -hmm. K-dramas mm -hmm. immensely did an amazing job of putting Korea on the map, and here's how foreign press outlets like France's Le Monde analyzed the popularity and impact of Korean dramas. Le Monde said, through their sophisticated romantic seducer characters, young K-drama actors have become the best ambassadors of the Korean cultural wave sweeping the world. In contrast to the virile sex symbols of American uh, blockbusters, they are drawing a new form of the masculine ideal. Now, this is what Lamont said. We're talking about like the K actors, the K, especially mm. Namja Juingong. In Korea, right. we call them Namju, right? <laughs> yes. So, what do you think? Do you think that male characters in Korea really shaped a new way of what we think is the masculine ideal? Um, it's kind of funny because to say the masculine ideal is very, very hilarious because yes. it actually depends on the drama you watch, right? In some of these dramas, the male protagonist is a demon or a <laughs> goblin, right? Yeah. right? So, however, I, I do think that it is globally spreading thanks to these male protagonists are played by very handsome, famous actors, maybe Gong Yu, Hyun Bin, <laughs> you know, just to name a few that are so famous. And now many K-pop stars are also becoming the male leads in many K-dramas. So they already have a fan base and they are expanding the Korean drama fan base. So I do think it is growing. It does create this very positive image uh, for for K dramas. And I don't know about you, Jen, but whenever my foreign friends come to Korea, they're <laughs> always looking for the K celebrity that was on oh. their favorite K drama. Yeah. Like, okay, where are all the Korean guys? Where are they? Where is my Gong Yu? My where mom my asks you? me all the time, where is Gong Yu? I'm sorry, mom, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but it's equivalent to us, for instance, looking for Brad Pitt on the streets. Right. Like, I don't know, LA. <laughs> but anywho, yes. the BBC also covered how K dramas have evolved over the past few years, especially in regards to how they deal with female protection protagonists and the concept of womanhood. To be exact, this article read, K-dramas now feature complex and powerful female characters reflecting momentous changes in society and media habits. By 2019, there were more workplace dramas and stories that involved women having influence in courts and in politics, even in historical dramas. And now, would you agree to this statement and this analysis? Like, are recent dramas here in Korea or movies really emphasizing a new concept of womanhood? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a global trend to see girl power, <laughs> and uh, I think many of the Korean dramas that we've seen in the past were very rags to riches, Cinderella mm -hmm. story, girl meets this handsome rich guy. Yeah. And very good examples are things like Parie mm -hmm. or like Lovers in Paris, or Secret Garden, this girl who's really just trying to make it in this world, meets this guy who happens to be a, a son of a conglomerate. Yeah, True yeah like Tebor, <laughs> and, and then they fall in love and everything Everything works out in the end, but now we see more of kind of this independent, strong female lead right. characters that tell their own stories and they kind of stand on its own without even the romance. The romance is just mm -hmm. kind of a, it's kind of a garnish, it's yeah. an accessory to make the story more interesting. But for example, uh, the dramas like The Glory, mm -hmm. it wasn't focused on her love life, it, it was wasn't. focused on this revenge story because she experienced this unspeakable school violence, it was a social issue. And yeah, he was, she was a very strong female lead. And Dr. Cha, or in Korean, it's Dr. Cha Jong Suk, is a woman, uh, a mother of two. She is a wife of a doctor, but then she decides to go back and pursue her dreams of becoming a doctor, even at a later age. And even dramas like uh, Strong Girl Nam Soon, and mm. this is kind of a sequel to Kim Sen Yeoja Do Bong Soon. Yes. Oh. And so it's basically a woman who is literally strong, you know, <laughs> physically like very physically strong. very strong, like Hulk-like yeah. powers, and 
help solve crimes. And I feel like these are really big changes we see in Korean female lead characters. Exactly. And it's really interesting to see that K-dramas are grasping societal changes. Like the cultural atmosphere has definitely changed. Our concept of what a traditional woman is mm -hmm. has changed now to progressive and more taking action, like main lead protagonist. Now, another iconic K-cultural trend that the foreign press has been paying attention to is Koreans love for iced beverages. Take a look at what CNN said about how iced coffee is now becoming a global trend. The article says, at Starbucks, cold drinks made up 75% of U.S. beverage sales last quarter. Analysts say it's younger consumers who are driving the shift to iced and cold ready-to-drink coffees, teas, and other beverages. Now, we mm -hmm. covered this once on News Gen as well. We mentioned the term orjuga. Orjuga. Mm -hmm. You guys heard of orjuga, right? Oh, yes. And I personally am orjuga myself. Oh, you are? Yes. Oh, and for really? our viewers who don't know, orjuga is when you have to drink iced American even in a very cold winter day. Yeah, <laughs> oh. even yeah. if you freeze to death, yeah. you would still go for you the ice You would still go mono. for the ice beverage. Exactly. Wow. So let's talk about that. What do you think Urjuga means in terms of our generation? Why is our generation so fixated on that? Well, I heard from people that they are Urjuga, or even if I freeze <laughs> to death, I will choose it. Uh, that actually a lot of people say even though it's so cold in winter yeah that when you go into an office building or you go into a study room you know it's so hot in there they are blasting mm -hmm. the heat so they actually use the ice americano to cool down and for those who don't know right an americano is just water two shots of espresso, just mm. plain coffee. They feel it really wakes them up. Mm -hmm. But me personally, I'm not much of an iced coffee drinker. Really? I'm always Ooh. a hot coffee drinker, even in the hot, hot days of mm -hmm. summer. Oh. So we're the opposite. You're the opposite. You're yes. So du -ju -ga. Ga. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so. <laughs> Anyways, du -ju the opposite yes. of our yes. I guess. Had hot coffee today, too. Exactly. Of and now, I think you should focus more on how this is a specific trend among the new generation, right? Right. I mean, I just saw someone drinking one before the show. I'm pretty sure they were of the new generation. <laughs> Even in the minus 14 degrees of the cold last week, my friends ordered iced Americanos at the cafe. We were all wearing long padding, but they were just sitting there sipping their iced coffee. Um, a huge influence in this, as you mentioned earlier from the article, was Starbucks launching in Korea mm -hmm. and bringing this wave of iced drinks, uh, iced frappuccinos. But of course, of course, this spread widely with social media. The mm -hmm. help of social media, when someone claimed on Twitter that they were oljuk a, and this <laughs> kind of word, this word became very viral online, and everyone was saying that I'm oljuk a. Um, out of four increasing, increasing selling drinks at Starbucks, three of them are usually iced drinks. Mm -hmm. So I think to put a personal theory behind this, and Jem had a great point about uh, even if even if it's during winter, it's kind of hot indoors. I think iced americano is almost weaker taste than the That's hot true. coffee because yeah. it's. A little more watered down than it's diluted, regular. Yeah. yeah, it's diluted, and I think it's a lighter drink, and you can kind of sip without, you know, giving it much thought. You don't have to make it cool down yeah. to fit the perfect temperature. Um, but I'm personally not orjuga like really. Oh, yes. Yeah, no, I, I actually, I'm not a coffee drinker. I drink mm. tea, but even during summer, I drink hot tea. So you guys are both like, yeah, <laughs> we like hot beverages. Yeah, you guys love yeah. hot beverages. beverages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. So even though Foreign Press did take a look at how a lot mm -hmm. of the young adults population like ice beverages there are some variations here yeah but a lot of you know k-pop artists including the famous bts yes. they're really into uh these ice drinks ice americanos Everything so i think ice. it's yeah. spreading even more with it that it definitely is and we're now going to switch gears to a more dire social issue south korea's low birth rate has frequently been hitting global headlines as well in an article dubbed is south korea disappearing the new york times said for the rest of the world meanwhile the south korean example demonstrates that the birth dearth can get much worse, much faster than the general trend in rich countries so far. One off-cited driver of the Korean birth dearth is academic competition, driving parental anxiety, and making family life potentially hellish in ways that discourage people from even making the attempt. Now, thoughts on this? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, as a parent here, I, I do have a first grader, mm -hmm. so my daughter is in the first grade, and I do absolutely agree that academic competition is one of the hardest 
things about it. It is. Actually, for first grade, a lot of students pre-study before mm. they even enter school. Oh. They've already had private tutors. They've already learned how to read and write. So when they enter school, that they're kind of ahead of the game. Mm. But if you don't take these measures, then you could be left behind. So it's a lot of competition between parents and students both. I do feel that there's a lot of pressure on young kids and parents as well. Exactly. So you would agree that it's the hyper competitive education environment that's making it difficult for young adults to actually think about getting married and having kids. Right, not to mention it's very expensive if you want to get these kind of tutoring uh, services mm -hmm. or go to a private academy. It costs a lot of money. In fact, South Korea rates as one of the most expensive countries to mm -hmm. raise children. Exactly, mm -hmm. that's definitely a big factor. Any, what were your thoughts on this analysis? Yeah, the birth rate is at 0 0.7 this mm -hmm. year and experts are predicting even lower for next year. And as we've been hearing, at this rate, Korea could cease to mm. exist in a few generations. And there are many government efforts that are being made trying to increase the rate, uh, you know, parental pay, child care services, extension of paternity or mm. maternity leave, providing more housing and benefits uh, financially for the parents. Um, but I think it could, as we covered a lot, uh, mm. and Jem said about the education, it's also this uh, social mindset and the competition and this fierce way of life um, yeah. <laughs> and I think that's a lot of pressure and I don't think people were very happy under that and maybe don't want to pass that on to their children. Exactly. That's a really good point you mentioned because a lot of my married friends, they're contemplating on having kids, whether right. to have kids or not. And one main factor that they always mention is they don't want to give the hellish lifestyle that mm. they're living there to their children. Right. Because if you think about it, it's your most beloved family. Mm -hmm. Right. So we do need to see better infrastructure mm -hmm. and support programs to better encourage people to actually want to have kids. But last but not least, South Korea's hyper-competitive education environment and private academy craze always seems to be interesting the foreign press. Bloomberg recently talked about the Sunung, the annual college entrance exam that is thought to be a make or break test that determines a young adult's early career. It explained that the annual Sunung exams are a crucial event in South Korea where attending a prestigious university is seen as the required path for landing a good job at, at a top conglomerate. Businesses will delay their openings, trading in stocks and foreign exchange will be delayed by an hour. Police will be deployed to assist any students running late for their exams. Now, Jem, we briefly <laughs> mentioned this. I do think this is a big part as to why we're seeing such a low population. But just in regards to South Korea's education system, as a mother of two in Korea, mm -hmm. are you are you a little scared for your kids to be growing up <laughs> oh. here in regards to Sunung? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is such a big deal here, right? So Sunung is uh, such a major test. and. Uh, as a teacher as well, I'm a teacher and a mother, I do feel that these kind of tests can often be very restrictive. Mm -hmm. It's teaching you there's only one right answer to the question, right? It doesn't really help with critical thinking or creative thinking. And the truth is not every student is good at test taking. <laughs> and it's not really a, you know, a measure of if you're smart or not, mm -hmm. right? Some people get nervous, they start sweating. So I, I think it puts too much pressure on students and then it might lead to other problems, right? Such as mental health issues mm. or potential suicidal thoughts. So it, it is very important not to put so much pressure, I feel, just right. my opinion. I completely agree. And I mm -hmm. think the uh, Bloomberg did an amazing job in really accentuating mm -hmm. how important a lot of Koreans perceive Sunung to be. Right. We consider it to be like the stepping stone for a yeah. good career mm -hmm. path. But speaking of South Korea's excelling academic performance, mm -hmm. obviously a lot of students do ace the Sunung test. They're <laughs> really <laughs> adept at actually for taking sure. really good tests. But the economists also noted how over recent years, despite COVID-19, Pupils from Japan, Singapore, and South Korea were among those who did well despite everything. And namely, it talked about even though we are living in situations like mm -hmm. COVID-19, where students would take online courses, South Korean students' academic performance excelled. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, even amidst COVID, Korea's <laughs> overall grades stayed mostly the same. And The Economist pointed out that the pandemic affected a lot of other nations' education. And given the circumstances, yes, the kids may have had a difficult time studying, but Korea was one of the nations that stayed afloat. But I do think it is inevitable, as Korea is a small nation mm. um, with limited opportunities and resources, and studying and academia is one of the best ways to get ahead in society. So I think every 
everyone is running for that one goal. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think you mentioned a really good point there. South Korea in particular, the society here really emphasizes academia. Mm -hmm. I think in other parts of the world, for instance, like Western Europe, there's a lot of Meister schools or vocational schools mm -hmm. that encourage mm -hmm. people to develop like technical skill sets. Right. And Korea is steadily getting there. But mm -hmm. as of now, we're still seeing a lot of hyper competition because mm -hmm. education, like scholarly education, seems to be the baseline. Mm -hmm. And apart from these articles and topics, yeah. were there any other issues that really captured South Korea's unique cultural or social aspects that also captivated your attention? And would you like mm -hmm. to see foreign media cover any of them anytime soon? Yeah, um, I read this year that Korea is becoming more of a multicultural mm -hmm. country. Um, I do think that there's many ways that we can prepare in the ways of that. I mean, that we have a lot of international marriages. Jem is one of an international couple. Right. <laughs> and I, I think we need to raise social awareness and government support. Mm -hmm. But I think more than that, just as a society, just learning about how that's going to help mm -hmm. and function, I feel like that could help with the population too. It can help. Yeah. I think everything is intertwined. Mm -hmm. And seeing our society change into a multicultural one will also open the gateways for us to discuss here on NewsGen. Mm, now, any right. other things you would like for media to cover? Oh, I went to the opposite side. Actually, a lot of my friends who live abroad are really interested in how fast the trends change in Korea. Mm. So things like, especially the quirky trends, like the photo booth, oh, the yeah. personal <laughs> color analysis, talking about your MBTI, yeah. and like that's very good small talk conversation. So they just love to see that everything is new all the time. And I think if there's more exposure to that in the kind of global media, mm -hmm. people will start coming, especially younger people exactly. who love it, right, will start coming to Korea or start learning more as well. I mean, our international number starts with pai, yeah. which in Korean, <laughs> it's a <laughs> But yeah, I never there's thought a of that. It's pali. We are seeing really fast-paced trends. And thanks to you guys, I think here on NewsGen, we have many different topics to look out for and discuss in the year 2024. But in the meantime, we'll be here every day from 9.30 to 10 a.m. Korea time to bring you more topics young people are talking about. Special thanks to Niall Song. No problem. Thank you. And Jen Kozak. Thank you. All right. Now, thank you everyone for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. We are News Generation. Generation.